Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Let me give you five keys very quickly. Five keys. Haven't told you the benefit and the blessings that come when you secure the manifest presence of God. Let me show you the roadmap. Please follow very carefully. I want you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, open my eyes. Let me see. I need this. I need this in my life. Are you praying? Open my eyes that I will see. Beholding wondrous things out of your law. Hallelujah. I give you these five keys as irrefutable spiritual keys that everyone who understands and activates these keys you will you will experience the manifest presence of God in your life alongside the blessings in a fearful way key number one you want to secure the Shekinah of God in your life perpetually the first key is passion for God passion for God Matthew 22 and verse 37 please let's hurry up Matthew 22 37 passion for God you cannot secure that dimension of God's presence without passion for God 22 37 Matthew 22 37 Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart. That means you can love him with part of it. Is that true? With all thy soul and with all thy mind. That means when he has to do with God, your heart, your mind, your brain, your soul, everything must plunge into it. Can I tell you, the presence of God is not a political issue. If you are not genuinely passionate you can fake power not presence you can get on unad um, adulterated power not adulterated presence passion for God John chapter 14 and verse 23 John 14 23 Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him is that in your Bible and make our abode with him so your love and your passion for God will secure that dimension of his presence there are many believers who have not made up their minds to passionately love and seek Jesus. You can't secure that presence. He will love you. You are just ready to remain at the outer court. You are not ready to press through even to the Holy of Holies. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. First key, passion for God. But as it is written, it says, I had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him listen there are many people who love preaching more than jesus there are people who love anointing more than jesus there are people who love the motions of spiritual leadership more than Jesus. There are people who love the accolades of men more than Jesus. Those who love business more than Jesus. Can I tell you, it's a risk in this end time to love anything and exalt it above and beyond Jesus. You want to secure divine presence. You want the Lord to be in the midst of you. And even to be mighty let me tell you it has to do with your love for Jesus not your love for preaching 
not your love for healing not your love for deliverance we are back to where it all starts passion I love Jesus to what degree passion qualifies the love it, it, it makes it deeper that is everything church is quiet apostle can't he just come or say no sir no listen to me only a foolish person will take a visitor that you suspect to be a thief and take him to where you keep your money and your ATM and your jewelries and say just sit here and wait for me I'm traveling somewhere and I'll return back is that how much you hate yourself there are visitors that when they come they stand at the gate you don't hate them but they have not chosen to press deeper so you what is what are you looking for okay this and that and that all right you give to them at the gate there are others who may enter into the house and stay outside you will honor them by bringing a seat and say please sit outside there are others who may get into the living room and sit carefully as though they are writing an exam all of them are relationship dependent there's somebody who will enter the living room and even before you arrive the person can just he can even pick your remote and be flipping channels it is all a product of relationship and yet there are few very few who can even come and meet you in your room and say how are you they can even be helping you dress your cloth while you are not there it is relationship dependent so don't you give God the relationship of a stranger and expect to be at the inner court of the spirit it will not happen that way preacher it will not happen that way businessman it will not happen that way there are people who will remain at the outer court they are interested Lord I just hear you are something that blesses whatever you are I love you and if you ever find a reason to bless me I'm still here outer court there are others who will push his hand and say I'm looking for your heart do you know there are people who they are not the owners of your house they don't live in your house but you are so close you can give them the spare key have you seen people like that to the point that you can call them and say where are you okay enter my house go to my bedroom open a drawer there you will see some money or something pick it up have you seen it yes sir you are talking you have that confidence that's why God can trust certain people with graces and you are wondering is God not afraid is it not a risk to make this person that powerful find out the relationships and the covenants that provide that possibility I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. Hallelujah. A gentleman sent me a text some months ago. I don't know who that is. Apparently, it's just, it's just something, I think he maybe because he used to watch me just say the power of God will do this this one will happen and he just thought the thing just happens and then I think he went to his fellowship or his group or something like that and um, according to him he said he repeated everything that he knew I was saying and he made a mess and a fool out of himself there because it is not a charm you are not reciting oh the power of god will touch somebody here this one no 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 this is not i am gabriel that stands in the presence do you know what that means gabriel is saying if i've come to destroy you zechariah are you saying the eye of god did not see it I am Gabriel man of God preach standing in the presence businessman do business standing in the presence and watch what happens to your life extraordinary manifestations of the glory of God many preachers will not pay the price to build that intimacy 
that creates that cloud of the presence and we mechanically come before God's people then you want to prophesy then you want to preach you will be surprised that you will be preaching a sermon that should be so powerful and yet the people are looking at you like this clueless and wondering why you will end because it's just words empty words not backed by any presence hallelujah many years ago i preached a message called envoys of his presence and i was teaching believers this same thing how to access divine presence i have found it as a gift and a treasure my greatest asset is not anointing believe me my greatest asset is not the scriptures in my mind as powerful as they are my greatest asset is not my bible this was produced by a publishing house with people there who are not even born again. Are we together? My greatest asset is the presence of God. Cast me not away, not from my palace. Cast me not away from thy presence. He says, take not your spirit from me. He knew what he would miss. Moses said, do not let us live here if your presence will not go with us. Lord, can there be any koinonia service without your presence? What then will we be doing? Preaching? No. Passion for God. Number two. What is the second key that secures the manifest presence of God in the life of an individual? Are you ready? The desire to please God. The desire to please God. You can put slash total obedience. The desire to please God slash total obedience. John chapter 8 and verse 29. Let's hurry up so we can pray. John 8, 29. Jesus is speaking now. Please look up. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone. Why? For I do always those things that please him. That means the father is not just walking with me because I am Jesus the son. My passion to please him, my passion to obey him is what has secured his presence. John 14 21 John chapter 14 and verse 21 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father he says and I will love him and will manifest myself to him is that in your Bible Ezekiel chapter 33 please and verse 31 Ezekiel 33 31 it says and they come to thee as the people cometh and they sit before thee as my people and they hear thy words but they will not do them for with their mouth they show much love but their heart goeth after their covetousness everybody said the desire to please him that's right that my life will bring joy to you oh God and he says this for me you are ready for this dimension of my presence number three are you ready for the third key what is the third key that activates the manifest presence of God in the life of a man intense moments of prayer and worship please start that point intense moments of prayer and worship yes sir intense moments of prayer and worship Psalm 10 verse 4 Psalm 10 verse 4 and then 63 from verse 1 Psalm 10 verse 4 it says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God it says God is not in all his thoughts Look at such a man because of his pride 
I am self-sufficient. He will not seek after God. God is not even in his thoughts. Psalm 63 and verse 1. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Next verse. It says, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise you. Verse 4. Thus, I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Uh -huh. It says, my soul shall be satisfied as a result with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Can I tell you this? Many of you heard the testimony when I came in, I met the testimony of that dear lady, the convert, that she played worship and prayed. Listen, let me tell you, if you want God to come down, do what Paul and Silas did. The Bible says they at midnight, they took their eyes away from the chains and everything. They prayed and then they sang and the prisoners had them. I'm sure somebody from a neighboring cell will say, stupid people, we're all criminals. Would you keep quiet here? Let's meditate on what is going to happen to us. And the Bible says they kept praying and singing it was not an angel that came read your bible for apostle peter it was an angel that came because they were praying alone but these ones prayed and then they sang and god said you guys step back the bible says suddenly an earthquake that's god for you angels don't create earthquake broke everything and the chains were there and the jailer wanted to kill himself and he said no 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 we are safe what happened he came the lord thy god in the midst of thee can i tell you learn this there are times that you need to take out time to pray pray and when you pray you worship you sing songs you roll if you can't sing the worship team they've sang for you there are so many songs people have done all kinds of worship collections saturate your room there is no man of god i know who is a solid career of god's presence who has alienated the life of worship it has nothing to do with whether you can sing or not it is the protocol of his presence psalm 100 said come before him with singing hallelujah sometimes you can just lie down and allow that worship consuming fire sweet perfume his awesome presence fills this room consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence fills my life consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence Let me give you a secret. The moment you find out that your atmosphere is tensed, you are sensing demonic activities or anger or some attributes, change immediately. Look for worship and change that climate. Hear what I'm telling you. The moment you begin to sense unease in your spirit, the spirit of fear, other spirits are joining the queue, waiting for fear or anger or any of these spirits. You can change the atmosphere immediately. Hallelujah. Is this how my life will be? What is the meaning of this? Why was I born a Nigerian? My parents had the opportunity to go abroad. Once those thoughts start coming, just know that it is the devil. That's a Luciferian spirit wanting to destroy you. Will this man really favor me? He said tomorrow he will bless me. But how am I sure? Very quickly change that atmosphere. It's a secret. 
your phone is not just for you to browse remove a lot of rubbish songs and put correct godly fire carrying songs arrange them as a file so that when duty calls without thinking twice hallelujah the devil looks at you and says the way i destroyed your father and your mother that is how i will shred your life to pieces you see what is happening in this nation and just when he wants to speak you just play something hallelujah you have won the victory let the voice just keep talking let's see who will survive don't stop the voice from talking you just create that atmosphere listen don't waste your time shutting the voice you bring in another voice my bible says the light shineth in darkness listen you go to bed and you wake up with some kind of dream just play worship and go to bed let it put it on repeat if god helps you and you can find one that has tongues in between while you are sleeping hallelujah listen please don't think i'm wasting your time master the art of controlling your atmosphere don't give satan that room the world is negative hear me the world is negative in many regards you switch on the news you hear that this is happening they just deduct some money from your your account to add to it and you see what is left you feel like throwing away your phone that's the time to change your atmosphere don't please don't forget this it's called the law of atmosphere every spirit is atmosphere dependent their manifestations when the devil wants to come he does not just budge into you there is an atmosphere that he has to wait for hallelujah passionate love desire to please god and to obey him intense moments of prayer and worship please look at me it is good to pray but in addition to prayer take out time to worship god apostle what does it mean to worship god one to sing you can sing praises and worship god or you can be in that atmosphere where you are pouring your life and your everything to him in worship are you ready number four what is the fourth key that secures the manifest presence of god walking in humility write it down please walking in humility psalm 34 verse 18 the fourth key you want to secure the manifest presence of god the bible says the lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save it such as be of a contrite spirit pride and glory will not go hand in hand that means you want to secure weightier dimensions of God's presence father I stand in awe of you that you can do this through my hands and my life thank you for your presence and the wonderful things that happen and God will say just because I gave you this dimension you are walking in humility people will sing your praises and clap thank God for them but you remind yourself I am nothing without him and he says you are ready for another dimension weightier dimensions of his presence hallelujah koinonia please hear me i have a duty to admonish you fight pride fight pride out of your life don't say we are like that fight it 
every time you see pride in your life don't tolerate it whatsoever pride in ministry pride in business the pride of life pride based on accomplishments it does not mean to not acknowledge what God is doing you have to acknowledge him it does not mean to not receive gratefully when people thank God for your life but please fight pride you know what pride is pride is a state of self-sufficiency where you believe that every result you are getting is because of your own effort now you are in trouble humility is not throwing away the truth or the fact about who you are and what God has done in your life, but a, an unashamed and a vocal acknowledgement that I am what I am today because of him. God, you've made me a billionaire, you may say. Thank you for that. If you say I'm not a billionaire, that's not humility. That's ignorance. You are a billionaire. God has blessed you. God has helped you. Apostle, should I trek instead of entering my car? That is, that is the labor of a fool. The Bible says to worry every one of them. Are we together? But humility is that in the midst of that, you take your eyes away from these things and say, Father, it is because of you. I am what I am by the grace of God. Humility. Finally, what is the final key that secures the presence of God? Sacrifice sacrifice as a lifestyle oh, not just as something you do traditionally sacrifice of everything your life your resources everything sacrifice secures the presence of God Psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints he says 50 and verse 5 those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. When you read 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, the full text is 3 to 14. We may not be able to read everything, but let's see how far we can go. Solomon loved the Lord, the Bible says. Are you seeing all these steps there? Then walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Verse 4. He says, The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings, motivated by love. Verse 5. In Gibeon, who came? The Lord. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I will give you. That's a blank check. Most of us, even God will be surprised. You will think he's not hearing you again. Just listening to everything you are saying. What did you say I should give you? I should give you heaven and move away from there. I should give you my throne. Because many people sometimes, we, we don't have limits to our passions and desires. When you have desires without limits, it will lead you to carnality. You must get to a realm where you know that enough is enough. Some of us, if God asks now, what should I give you? Anything. He says, stand up from your throne. That was the mistake of Haman. What shall we do to this man? He said, let him climb the king's horse and wear the king's robe out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth was. That means one day he would have killed the king. Esther helped him to kill him first. If not, one day, Haman would have killed the king. He said, I have served you in righteousness, in uprightness. You have kept me. You have kept for him in this great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Verse 7. He says, Now, O Lord, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. This is a king, oh, not a king about to be elected or about to be a king that is currently seated. And he said, Lord, they call me king, but I know what I am before you. I am a little child. I know not how to go out and how to come in. What display of humility. He says, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Verse 9. Give therefore 
thy servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may be discern between good and bad for who is able to judge these people this so great a people the Bible said the speech pleased the Lord are you seeing all the steps I'm leading now he did something here that pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing even in his requests and petitions he was pleasing the Lord and the Lord said because thou hast not asked for long life neither for riches for thyself nor the life of your enemies but you have asked for yourself understanding to decide judgment behold i have done according to all thy words i have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall there arise any like unto thee and I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Humility is a very powerful spiritual quality that can secure the presence of God. Do you know, I submit to you sincerely, every time I have the opportunity to pray and spend time with God especially preparing for koinonia I sit down sometimes and I don't say anything I may just allow worship to just be playing and I think of the honor that God has given me God has given me the honor of many people's lifetime in one and sometimes I'm not even able to pray and I say God look at what you have done through my life if you never bless me again you don't owe me you have you have blessed me you have been kind to me do you know what it means for God to gather people across the world to listen to you and to pay attention to what you represent don't you ever take it for granted it is the mercy and the favor of God sometimes I just lie down flat on the ground and I say Lord I dedicate this result this success while I'm doing that tens and hundreds of text messages are coming to my phone from all over the world apostle you are this and I push the phone together with the text messages you can wait let me worship the God who made me what I am learn humility don't be ashamed of it we live in a world where submitting your trophies to Jesus looks like you fall in your hand we are very full of ourselves. We like to brag and say, this is my own, my estate, my building, my car, my money. Wonderful. But Jesus must be seen. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. In my life, be lifted higher. Higher, be lifted higher. Let my King be lifted up. Let Your name be lifted up. Let Your praise be lifted up. Oh. while you are demonstrating humility in his presence and before men you must demonstrate humility in his presence and then before men if you demonstrate humility in his presence alone you are still a hypocrite in his presence and before men they must see your life and know that this man was God made made by God the same way you look at a product and they say made in China or made in the US, made by this, built by this construction company. People should look at your life, prospered by God, helped by God, anointed by God, favored. Hold on. They should not just see the prosperity by who? The person who made it happen is the one who, de who deserves the credit. Let's wrap up. Finally, 
when you make up your mind to live a life of sacrifice you have offered your entire body a living sacrifice he says Romans 12 and verse 1 I beseech you brethren by the message of God he says to offer your body so your body is the first sacrifice because the love of God will constrain you on many grounds sacrifice the presence of God would not come for nothing it comes because there is work to be done your body your resources your intellect everything must serve the Lord so if your body is serving the Lord and your pocket is not serving the Lord it is not complete sacrifice if your pocket is serving the Lord and your body is not serving the Lord it's not complete sacrifice your mind must serve the Lord your influence must serve the Lord everything God gave you must serve the Lord sacrificially so hallelujah we returned from a trip today and as soon as we arrived I didn't even consider it was not in my mind whether I'm tired or not that that, that was far from it my heart was just to brush up on my notes and to pray excitedly Lord this is another opportunity again to bless your people thank you for the honor of granting me safe journey now let's get to the business when we are done and I'm done with everything I can now find out are you tired they said you came and preached now I can verify whether it was me or it was can I tell you this there are many of us God cannot trust you with certain weights of his presence because of simple laziness and an and excessive passion for comfort and convenience this duty will cost you everything there are times you will have to stretch Jesus stretched the apostles stretched I hand over to you five keys that I have worked with in my own life and I've seen a bit of this grace and this mighty presence of God upon my life for as long as you walk in keeping with these keys a final recap as we pray number one passion for God number two the desire to please God and to walk in total obedience number three intense moments of heartfelt prayer and worship number four walking in humility genuine humility and number five a lifestyle of sacrifice excitedly so you have secured the keys that will make you indeed a host to God's Shekinah Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place We'll sing it one more time and then we're done. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.